Flipping the Kick and Bass Group. Let's check it out. I have a track here from a client which I mixed. I'm going to show you the example. Let's have a listen. Yeah, pretty cool. And let's have a look at the kick and bass group. I always have some kick and bass processing to make it sound better, basically. So let's have a look what I does. First of all, let's have a listen to the kick and bass in solo, only to the kick and bass group without the group processing. That's how it sounds without. And now with. So much more powerful. You hear the whole group processing on kick and bass, sounding it so much more powerful. It already sounds, yeah, it just sounds dull. It sounds not powerful, not professional without the group processing. And I want to give you a quick walkthrough what I did. First of all, I have a Kotelnikov compressor here. Then I have a Mark EQ. I'm not going to explain the settings of this. But what's pretty interesting here, I have Fab Filters at home, where I have a pretty nice setting, which I often use. I use one band here, and I use yeah, pre a pretty strong drive on the low end band with almost 50% with a warm tube. It's mixed 100%, so it's a quite strong move. Then on this band, I use nothing. It has zero mix. And on this band, which is um, around 400 hertz, I use again a warm tube a saturation algorithm and I crank the drive up 80%, which is quite strong, but the mix is only 20%. So the idea is here to kind of, let's say, parallel process the upper frequencies above 400 hertz to make it strong in the mix, to make it powerful in the mix, to make kick and bass cut through a busy mix. And this techno track was very busy. So that's why I made this decision. And at the end of the kick and bass group, we have the clipper here. And if we look at the clipper, what it does, it's not very special, to be honest. It's just a normal clipping to gain some headroom. So if we look at the, the clipping uh, peaks here, you see mostly the kick here has some transients and I clipped them. So it will, so I will have more headroom later on in the mastering stage my processors on the master bus doesn't have to deal with the peaks it's probably just like maybe one or two decibels which i clip here um you will also hear a very subtle difference if you have a trained ear and if you have the right listening environment and i like the effect it a little bit saturates it it's very subtle to hear we can try to catch the nuances but if your ear is not trained, you will probably not get it. So this is without. And this is with. It's a very subtle nuance. It saturates kick and bass a little bit. And it kind of, I don't know, it's always really hard to, to speak about what I hear. I just, I just like it. It's a subtle nuance where... I feel it is a positive effect, so I keep it on the group. So this is an example. I got a lot of um, I got a lot of interaction about the last uh, comment, so I thought let's clarify how to use it on a kick and bass group. Why to use it here? It's definitely the purpose to gain headroom for the other processing and to get more loudness out of the full track. Hope you enjoy it and see you on the next one. Bye bye, guys. Yeah.